In 2015, the Russian army unveiled their next generation T-14 Armada tank. And ever since then, military analysts have been trying to figure out, is this the world's greatest tank or biggest lie? It boasted increased firepower, hardened protection, and more mobility than a Russian ballerina. A leaked UK Ministry of Defense intelligence memo warned that the T-14 super tank was 20 years ahead of any armor that NATO had in its entire force. All this before the T-14 had even fired a shot in anger. But some military Western experts, they analyzed this and they were skeptical. They predicted that Russia would never be able to actually mass produce the T-14. So which side was lying to us? Russia say it isn't so. The T-14 had a whole bunch of new capabilities with an upgraded 125 millimeter cannon, a brisk top speed of 20 kilometers per hour, faster than any of its competitors, all while having a lower production cost cheaper than the M1 Abrams and it even weighed comparatively little at 55 tons. Now, I would never suggest the Russian government is lying, but those claims seem sus to me. We need to investigate further. It featured the world's first unmanned tank turret, which was a technologically fancy, digitally controlled system. This thing was a, it's a departure from Russia's historic approach to tanks, which to be fair, was to make them cheap and make them a lot. One entity that believed the hype was NATO. That or they used it as an excuse to pump tons of money into making the larger 140 millimeter tank gun to counter the Armada. But then there were the first signs of cracks in the T-14's armor, figuratively speaking, of course. An incident happened in Moscow at the rehearsal for the T-14's first appearance. It seemed to indicate that behind the scenes, the tank development wasn't going as smoothly as we thought. A brave individual leaked this footage of what looks like the T-14 broken down deadlined in the middle of the road, stuck there for like 15 minutes. I swear this never happens to me. Which one of you leaked that video? No, seriously, Russia wants to know so they can send you on a free trip to Siberia. This was actually one of those many instances where it's kind of hard to tell what's true about the T-14 Armada, because it later turned out that the media had gotten this situation all wrong. The tank hadn't actually broken down at the rehearsal. It was just some inexperienced driver accidentally engaged the tank's emergency brake. Way to go, Private Dimitri. I'm telling Putin this was all your fault. One of the key concepts with the T-14 design was that it was developed as a revolutionary new armored vehicle concept with its universal chassis system. So basically it aimed to make all armored track vehicles like the, the troop carriers and the mobile artillery vehicles, they would all share the same exact body and hull. Having all those parts in common would make maintenance much cheaper and much easier. Which I'm sure the thought of having easier maintenance makes every American tanker out there shout a great big unironic hua. I think the closest Russian equivalent to that phrase is Tavarish. Our Russian viewers can tell me if that carries the same amount of cringy connotation as hua does. In this way, the Armada is actually very similar to the direction that the US Army was planning to go in with their replacement for their own main battle tank, the M1 Abrams in the early 2000s. Except that the US prototype, the XM-1202 program, failed several times and never even made it through development far enough to even have the opportunity to stop working in public. You can't say the US Army next-gen tanks are awful if you never make one. So the 2015 press reports from the top Russian tank manufacturer, UVZ, they claimed that by 2020, they would finish producing an initial run of 2,300 Armadas, which would be enough to replace about 80% of the frontline units in Russia. Again, we seem to be coming up against lies here because obviously that hasn't happened, not even a little. Ballooning unexpected production costs meant that there were only a handful of T-14s in existence today. They're like an endangered tank species. I'm pretty sure it's a war crime to hunt them. I'm sorry, but can you blame me for feeling just a little bit lied to by the Russian army? They build this awesome next generation tank, they dangle it in front of tank lovers, and then they never deliver on the goods. Never mind, a year later in 2016, they changed their mind and reported Surprise, Russia's lethal T-14 Armada tank is in production. Then in 2018, they gave me whiplash real bad by backtracking again and canceling the production, saying that they simply would just upgrade their old T-80s and T-90 tanks. Fair enough. Okay, I'm at peace. I accept the T-14 Armada will never go into full production. Russia starts to mass produce T-14 Armada tanks in 2022. Quit playing games with my heart, Russia. It can only take so much. This video exists for the purpose of attempting to cut through all of the deception and determine once and for all the T-14 Armada's actual strengths and weaknesses. It's my attempt to put the entire development saga into historical context. As a former infantryman, I don't really have a dog in this race. I'm not biased in favor of one tank or another. I'm going to attempt to analyze what kind of new features the T-14 Armada has. I want to see how it compares to the American M1 Abrams 
and look at how this novel design hints at what's in store for the future of tank warfare. There's a ton of Russian propaganda on the one hand, and oodles of Western misinformation and skepticism on the other, but I think enough dust has settled on the vehicle since its release in 2015 that we can investigate the truth about the T-14 Armada tank. The origins of the idea for an unmanned tank turret and universal chassis system are hotly debated amongst tankers. Some say that the Americans came up with the idea first, and others angrily write articles claiming that the Russians did. Either way, I think we can all agree that tankers should never have been given internet access. I think the truth is likely that the Russians took some inspiration from the scrapped 1980s M1 Abrams tank testbed prototype, which had an unmanned remote controlled tank turret with an autoloader, a three person crew in a protected shell. It shares a ton of design principles in common with the T 14 Armada. And the Americans, they ripped off the infantry fighting vehicle concept from the Russians, so all's fair in love and war, right? In fact, the predecessor to the T 14 Armada started development in the Russian army in 1995, and it had a lot of the same features that would end up making it into the T 14 Armada. Like the high output engine, you had the taller turret profile, and increased depression and elevation angle capability. When the T-95 was cancelled in 2010, a lot of unfinished progress was rolled into the T-14 project, which began design at Earl Vagov Zavad in the same year. If you don't know much about Russian tank production, then at the very least, you need to know about the company Earl Vagon Zavad. I mispronounced that with confidence, right? My old squad leader always told me, Cappy, if you're gonna be wrong this much, at least be wrong with confidence, Hua. Today, Earl Vagon Zavad is the world's single largest manufacturer of tanks. The company was created as a train manufacturer in 1931 as part of Joseph Stalin's second five-year plan, which was focused on modernizing Russia's industrial power back then. UVZ was one of the many plants that were then converted into tank manufacturing during World War II, and they stayed that way all the way to today, where they're struggling to pump out more than 100 T-14s in five years. At one point, they helped to create over 35,000 T-34s in World War II, which were instrumental in defeating the Germans on the Eastern Front. Fast forward to 2010, and the Russian Ministry of Defense gives the UVZ tank manufacturer a specific task, have the T-14 next generation tank on the production line by 2015 or else. Well, the best way to understand the Armada's strengths and weaknesses is to break it down into the three main categories that we use to analyze any armored vehicle, its firepower protection and its maneuverability. The T-14's firepower is a massive upgrade thanks to the new primary gun and ammunition. The main 125mm 2A82 1M cannon is longer now at 6 meters. And this gives its rounds a 20% higher velocity than its opponents. One Russian source claims that the rounds travel at 2,050 meters per second. Hey guys, you see where I parked my car? It's white, kind of crappy. Oh, I guess I'll just walk to work. It's a 20% accuracy boost over the last version of the weapon. The max effective range for the armor-piercing fin stabilized ammo is 4.7 kilometers. Recently released open source information on the Armada tells us that it can carry an extra 10 rounds in the Abrams, so it has a total of 45 shots. The truth about the Armada's main cannon is that most tank experts on both sides, the Russian and Western side of the aisle, believe that this is an awesome weapon. It's better than the Abrams, they say. A lot has been said about the T-14's unmanned turret design because it's the tank's greatest distinguishing feature. It's the design choice that informs every other decision on the tank. It's a major departure from simple Russian historic tank design by placing three soldiers in a separate protected crew shell in the front of the vehicle where they control the turret electronically. One of the advantages of this approach, in my opinion, is that it makes the tank more lethal and it gives extra space for an autoloader. Now, autoloader systems, they automatically lift these heavy 50 pound munitions into the barrel. This means you can operate the entire tank with one less member. The Abrams needs four soldiers, but on the downside, this means that you have less soldiers' hands to help out when it comes to doing routine maintenance. The other downside is if you're a tank commander, you now have one less person to give details to and boss around. Private Dimitri, go find your American counterpart, Carl, and tell him to stop drinking all the rip it. It's an argument that autoloaders are slower than humans, but the Russian army claims that their autoloader can yeet out 10 rounds per minute, which is about the same rate of fire as the Abrams. But this video isn't about the lies of the T-14 Armada, it's the truth about it. Personally, I think the autoloader has more plus sides than downsides, and it's an absolute necessity when we consider that the trend right now in military 
is going towards remotely controlled main battle tanks. So it's gonna need that autoloader. The autoloader also allows for 100 millimeter larger munitions with its single piece ammunition instead of the old two piece ammo. The new rounds have greater armor piercing ability, able to cut through 1,000 millimeters of rolled homogenous steel enemy armor at a distance of two kilometers. A new kind of tank round can be fired from the main gun called the Sprinter Anti-Tank Guided Munition, which has the longest range of the tank at eight kilometers, but its true range is actually capped at 7.5 kilometers because that's the max range for its laser rangefinder. The ballistic computer can't create a firing solution for something it can't see, right? The weapon is connected to a radar tracking system, which provides an automatic firing solution for each target. Before we get into the potential weaknesses of the T-14's lethality, I wanna tell you about World of Tanks. It's a free-to-play video game with over 100 million players online. You can test out more than 600 different tanks in this game. There's light, medium, and heavy tanks from all different historical periods. It's a great game to kick back, relax, unwind, and destroy some enemy armor in. You can tear across deserts, climb steep hills, and sneak through forests. There are over 40 different battle arenas. I can confirm this game is historically accurate and has authentic tank performance. You'll earn experience, modify, and upgrade your personalized tank. Be sure to check out December's holiday OPs that feature daily missions like the Holiday Spirit and Commander Arnold Schwarzenegger. Click the link in the description, use code TANKMANIA to get your free seven days of premium account time and 250,000 in-game credits. You'll also get the premium tank Excelsior plus three rental tanks for 10 battles each. You'll get the Tiger 131, the Cromwell B, and the T-34-85M. I'll see you guys in game. Russian defense company Rostec CEO Sergei Kamivziov said, quote, the Armada crew does not need to aim accurately it only has to aim the gun roughly. Electronics will do the rest. It will accurately determine the distance to the target and aim the gun at it. The vehicle uses artificial intelligence elements that help the crew deliver fire. That sounds like a ton of fun until the onboard computer gets promoted before you do. I can deal with the fact that most dogs in the military outrank me, but I cannot tolerate Russian computers that probably know my entire browser history, but not all threats require the main pew pew cannon. For an anti-personnel and anti-drone engagements, the T-14 features a 12.7 millimeter machine gun, which is like the 50 cal in the American arsenal. It's got 300 rounds and it's positioned directly on the roof mounted commander's optical sight, which operates independent of the main gun, so it's not fixed to the cannon. Russian military sources claim the heavy anti-material machine gun is hooked up to the tank's radar system and that it can actually shoot down incoming RPG rounds. Look me in the eyes and tell me that machine gun actually shoots down rockets. If it's true, I'll give you 2 million rubles right here, right now. What do you mean that's only five USD? So yes, it's true. Russia did recently send the T-14 Armada into Syria and they are kind of purposely insinuating that it got into combat operations there but the language that they used in the press release about it was purposely vague, so they left it open to the idea that maybe it didn't get in combat, maybe it did. And the reason I think they sent it to Syria was so that they could get it into action, get some actual hard performance data about how it performs in those conditions, so that they could use that information to better sell it to foreign countries that they're trying to sell the T-14 Armada to. The commander's optical sight on the turret gives the vehicle a 360 degree hunter killer ability, which is this cool way of saying that the commander can search for and identify enemy targets at the same time as the gunner looks for separate targets and they can communicate to each other and send the signal. If they spot one, they can send the turret there. And the driver can focus on not hitting the emergency brake again. The Russian army is currently developing a super 152 millimeter 2A83 upped gun version, which is a full meter longer, it's seven meters long, and it would be the largest caliber ever fitted on a tank. Don't worry, while Russia is working on creating super tank guns, the US is throwing their entire defense budget into recruiting campaigns that strike fear into the hearts of their enemy. So having a massive yeet cannon on top of your turret is only half of the equation in modern tank warfare. The other half is the type of fire control system that the tank has. Military analysts agree that this is one of the aspects where the offensive abilities of the T-14 Armada could use a huge improvement. The gunner's optical sights can only go up to 12 times magnification, which means in good weather, they can identify a tank sized target at five kilometers. For comparison, the Abrams has a max zoom of 50 times which likely has better resolution, better color, and longer laser range finding abilities. 
If you disagree with my minor criticisms of the T14 tank throughout this video, then please take solace in the fact that I'm just an average former ground pounder standing in a tiny bedroom in my sweatpants on Long Island. What do I know, right? Historically, the Russian army has been at least a decade behind the American forces when it comes to the resolution on thermal imaging and the effectiveness of shooting on the move with these fire control systems. Ballistic computers are not up to par with the American Abrams. On the other hand, the likelihood of a tank engagement past five kilometers is incredibly rare, especially in most parts of the world anyway. This is why I continue to suggest to this day that the Russian and US Army should join forces and rule the galaxy together. Hashtag the Empire did nothing wrong. The T-14 Armada deploys a four layer protection system. The first of which is the Galas paint coating, which reduces its signature to infrared and radar. A Russian citizen used a thermal camera to capture footage of the T-14 going down the street. And you can see its IR signature is reduced. The only place you really see a hotspot is where the exhaust port is in the back. If that fails, and you're able to spot and fire at the Armada, it then uses its second layer. This thing's crazy. The Afghanit Active Hard Kill Protection System is said to be even more effective than the famous Israeli Trophy Active Protection System. Russia actually claims that it can defeat an incoming tank round, which no APS has done before, as far as I know. When we look at the Russian patent, we can see that it uses a different approach to APS. It fires a shock core warhead at the incoming projectile, which works better against small, fast flying incoming tank munitions. But on the other hand, it has the disadvantage of needing to be more accurate. So that ballistic calculation that tracks the incoming round needs to be more exact. There's less room for error on the Afghanite system. I'm always worried I'm gonna be standing outside a tank and I'm gonna go to throw some innocent item to one of my buddies standing on top of the tank and then the APS system is gonna accidentally identify it as an incoming missile and shoot it down. No, just me. On the soft kill side of the protection systems, the T-14 Armada uses powerful infrared jammers and a unique automated smoke round to deflect incoming missiles, like the Javelin. Is this stuff okay to breathe in? Wow. Give me a bit of a head rush. With the unmanned turret, it can be smaller and requires less heavy armor, which means more weight savings. This means if you're ever in a situation where you're facing off against the T-14 Armada on the battlefield, then you're gonna wanna aim for the least armored section, the turret, which also has the added benefit of possibly knocking out its cameras and totally blinding the tank crew, making it useless. Unmanned turrets do have some weaknesses. They rely far more on the electronics, which are notoriously finicky. It gives the crew less situational awareness. Russian defense writer Oleg Fleshnyov said, quote, it's not possible to turn the capsule like a turret, so the emphasis is on optical means and electronics which can fail in battle. If all those systems fail though, then there's another layer of protection, the new Malakat dual explosive reactive armor. We know that the last generation of ERA reduced incoming round penetration by 50%. ERA is made up of these bricks of basically explosives that they're interconnected with systems that can detect when a missile's coming and they detonate right as the missile gets close, which trips off the American tow missile warhead before it even hits the tank. So in response, the American tow missiles were upgraded to have tandem explosives so that the second charge would still go through even if the first one was tripped off. In the event that a warhead gets through the T-14 Armada's explosive reactive armor, there's still the whole armor there. And it's made up of a brand new type of steel that the Russians specifically designed for the T-14. It's called the 44S SVSH, which supposedly reduces the weight by hundreds of kilograms, a 15% lighter overall vehicle. From what I could gather, the hull is also composed of titanium steel alloy, carbon fiber nanotubes, textilite, ceramics, and pockets of air. Projectiles would have to drive through all of that in order to defeat the tank. The T-14 Armada was designed since inception to allow for remote control use with the intent to make it fully robotically controlled someday. These features are easy to integrate into unmanned turret systems like the one already in use here. Many NATO vehicles using hulls and system architectures designed during the Cold War and in the 70s can't support unmanned remote controlled systems. It's not suited for it. T-14 Armada has an A85 3A turbocharged diesel engine with an output of 1500 horsepower, which is placed in the rear compartment. What it really means is that the T-14 has a very high power to weight ratio since the weight is relatively low. This is what gives it that 20 kilometers faster speed than other tanks. The declared maximum fuel range on the road is a distance of 600 kilometers. 
But the bottom line is that all of these aspects that we've covered so far don't really mean anything if you can't afford to mass produce the T14 Armada. Obviously, much of the conversation in and around the T14 focuses on the controversy over how much it actually costs to manufacture. The vehicle was conceived in 2010, at a time when the Russian economy was booming and their state coffers were filled with all the sweet, sweet petrodollars. Since then, the situation has rapidly reversed. I've read a number of opinions from influential Russian defense experts, and a number of them have publicly expressed their doubts over the costs of the system. Alexander Sharon, the first deputy chairperson of the Duma Defense Committee, quote, first it looked more than innovative and sparked explosive interest, but the car was prohibitively expensive. As a result, the Russian Ministry of Defense came to the conclusion that one cannot especially rush the large bashes of T-14 Armadas. Public estimates on the cost of the unit per vehicle vary widely, from 3.8 to 9.5 million USD, with it likely being closer to 9.5 million. In 2015, they had already spent $17 million on creating a production line and factory for the Armada. So I don't think the Russian army was pretending to create this tank. I don't think they were trying to deceive the West into thinking they had a next generation tank, as some have suggested. I believe they were actually planning to deliver the 2,300 Armadas by last year, but something went horribly wrong along the way. So what was it that sidelined it? I'm struggling to get a couch today, so I can only imagine how difficult it is to get a tank. If you think I'm being hard on the T-14 by pointing out some of its flaws, just remember that the American XM-1202 prototype main battle tank replacement has also been in various stages of development and cancellation for the better part of two decades. If the T-14 Armada doesn't go into full rate production for another 10 years from now, it would still likely be ahead of their competitors at that point. It gives the Russian army a platform to test out new armor and guns, but its less effective optics and unrealistic production costs continue to hold it back in the short term. The Russian army might have to take a play out of their old World War II era playbook and look back at what some of their original tank designs did so well and made them so unbeatable. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, these are just my opinions on the T-14, my thoughts and insights based on my military experience and the research I've done. I don't claim to be a definitive source on this stuff. If you have a different theory or you think I missed something, please comment below. I'll do my best to answer you because learning from all of you is easily my favorite part of having the opportunity to make these videos. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. Check out one of our other videos while you're here. This is Task and Purpose.